Hello and welcome to the Aid Station. I'm Chris Robb and today I'm hugely excited to be meeting one of the people who I as a runner followed for many years in, in my youth, Dave Moorcroft, who used to be the world 5,000 meter record holder, joining us today from uh, the UK. Hi Dave, great to see you again. Hi Chris, how are you doing? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, just yeah, great to catch up and uh, look, it's, uh, you know, world's changed hugely, hasn't it, since we we first met in Riyadh, uh, which was, uh, what, probably six months ago now, I guess. Or no, it was late last year. I think I've lost track of the time. But what a different world we're in. And uh, I'd love to maybe start by just getting a little bit of background for the viewers that don't know you about your story, please, Dave. Cool. Um, well, I, I began running when I was 11. Um, and I, I, it was in those days when the kids want to be in the school football team or rugby team. And I was pretty useless at both. And on a wet, cold horrible day the PE teacher sent us all out for a run and, and I, I kind of won it and thought I quite like this uh, and that and made, made I could get into a school team. I joined my local club which is Copenhagen Ivor Harriers at the age of 11 and, and that's probably the best move really because it's got such a fantastic tradition of Harrier running, of marathon running and I was surrounded by brilliance not just those like Basil Heatley, Dick Taylor, Bill Adcox, Brian Kilby who went on to you know World Olympic Commonwealth success but loads of people in the club who just were desperate to be the best they could be. So I was in a, an environment of excellence from day one and, and just loved running from day one. And then I kind of grew into it, was a slow developer, um, wasn't exceptional at school. At, at age of 16, um, I began to be coached by a genius called John Anderson, who, um, who took me and many other athletes um, to, the, kind of, to the top. And he was the one who probably changed me because I was, I was a little bit um, nervous, a little bit lacking in belief. He gave me that belief. Um, he, he dragged the most speed out of me he could and kind of went on to, you know, to breaking a world record and winning a couple of Commonwealth Games gold medals. That's it in a brief. I can tell you about the bit now as well, which is a, an older person with knees that are in a, in a really bad way shuffling along but still enjoying running for the same reason as I enjoyed it when I was 11. That's wonderful and uh, you know certainly one of the things we've seen with COVID isn't it is that, that the, the number of people that are getting out and running and cycling and being active is amazing and hopefully that's going to help unearth plenty more Dave Moorcrofts and, uh, and Sebastian Coes and the likes of you know that great British tradition and all over the world and and obviously just people getting fit and healthy and, and enjoying being in the outdoors whilst uh, lockdowns are happening. You know, one of the real joys for me of the last 20, 30 years, and, you know, sadly we're seeing it at the moment, is that people have been more recent years discovered the joy of running just for running's sake and walking and cycling and swimming. Because when I started running, we, we were the oddities. Um, you probably remember that, Chris. People thought we were a bit strange. And, uh, and people did everything they could to get out of running at school. And now to see so many people run for so many different reasons, um, bringing personal pressure, raising money for charities, um, being with friends, having a sense of belonging and camaraderie. It's fantastic. And, you know, the, the joy of running is so simple, isn't it? Anyone can do it. Everybody can do it. And it doesn't matter whether what pace you do it. Um, the, the experience, you start at the same place, you finish at the same place, and it's just a fabulous experience. Yeah, I know. You're so right. Uh, yeah, so, so, such a great thing and great to see so much of it. And I think it's going to have, whilst our industry is obviously struggling at the moment, Hopefully people will, will come for that, that joy of running in, in big groups and once we get past this. What, what's life been like for you, you, you know, over the, the COVID period? I know we, we were talking beforehand and we had a bit of conversation at the time. You were on holiday in New Zealand when it broke and you kind of almost got stranded there at one stage and had a long journey home. But what, what's the last few months been like? Um like pretty much everybody in the world, I think, um, the, we went, my wife and I went to New Zealand in late January and with another friend, we had a fantastic eight weeks, seven weeks going around the South Island of New Zealand. So it was all absolutely brilliant. Um, but then about a week before we were due to leave New Zealand to fly to Melbourne, Australia, to be with an athlete called Pat Scammell, or you, you know well, and, um, uh, and have a, a week with them. Uh, Australia went into lockdown. New Zealand went into lockdown and then we had really difficult, real difficulties getting out of New Zealand because flights kept being cancelled. But ultimately we made it home in um, beginning of April, about April the 7th, 8th, something like that, right in the height of the pandemic in the UK um, and spent two, three weeks at least in pretty much total lockdown. 
and now the lockdown has begun to ease a little bit um, but it, it's still a kind of scary time um, still you know too many people with the virus and too many people sadly passing away um, but you know one of the fortunate things is we can see the family more now see the grandchildren more now and of course Linda and I can go out for a, a very slow but really enjoyable run on you know on as many days as we possibly can that's wonderful. The one thing I thought I'd never do, I've started to do Pilates, uh -huh. and uh, it's not a pretty sight, but uh, it, it's encouraging me to, do, to take me out of my comfort zone. Fantastic, and, and you know, lots of Pilates, yoga, stretching, those kind of things, so important that I think, I mean, that always used to be, when I was a runner, I used to hate the stretching part, yeah, you know, it was so important, but it was, uh, it, it was so hard, and when you do it in a class like that, I think it, uh, it makes it a bit easier, doesn't it? It, I'm glad we're doing it with my wife in a room on the screen. So that not too many people can see how stiff and awkward and uncoordinated I am. It's uh, long distance runners are not tend not to be the best at these sort of things, are, are they? No, absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah. And, and so that's a new challenge you've taken on. I, I always like to speak about challenges. There's been plenty of them. One of the things we're talking about, you're very involved in, in park run. Obviously, the industry has been impacted significantly. What are some of the challenges you've, you've dealt with, maybe even you know, on a personal level and, and through the, the work-related things you do? Um, well, well, park run's in a good place. Um, you know, there's, there's a, the, it started in New Zealand again, which is great. The rest of the world is kind of waiting and hoping for the right time to begin again. But the Park Run community has stayed connected through social media. Um, and there's a thing called Not Park Run. And there's, there's tens of thousands of people that are going out and recording their own time. So hopefully the Park Run um, world has, has stayed connected. And, but it, it is really difficult for, for all of us who enjoy meeting, socialising, being in a group, going to, say, a Park Run or any event. That, that we, we can no longer do that. Now, personally, I find it really tough on the family front that, uh, you know, you see your grandchildren from a distance, but you can't give them a cuddle. Um, but it's beginning to move in the right direction. And I think, you know, hopefully people have understood and people have appreciated the things that, that, that are most important in life, um, that health and happiness and family and well-being is so much important, more important than some of the kind of selfish things that sometimes we pursue. And, um, you know, fortunately, the simplicity of running and exercise, I think so many people have found attractive and so many people have, um, have discovered through this awful period. But, you know, for me, being with um, friends and friends and family who've got friends who've either been seriously ill or passed away is really tough. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? I mean, I, I must admit, I'm, I'm lucky to be in a part of the world where we, we haven't seen a lot of that. And to be honest, I, I you know, literally can count on one hand the number of people that I know that have been impacted or I infected with COVID. But, uh, yeah. you know, with older generation and, and, and your friends and things that, uh, you know, that's a really tough part of it that re really strikes home. And, and that whole thing of, you know, again, not, be not being able to hug your grandkids that you know, we as human beings love that that connection mm -hmm. that, that, and, 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 and being around people, which is, is part of the yeah. industry as well, bringing people together in these runs and, and, and communicating, um, you know, with, in training and training runs and so on. What, what are you seeing in the industry in the UK at the moment? Well, I, I, you know, London Marathon are kind of, we're waiting to find out whether London Marathon is going to happen. Um, you know, most other mass participation events have, have stopped, sport has you know, football, Premier League behind closed doors. So sport is trying to adjust. Um, I, I, I can't see things changing massively quickly. Um, I think the government in, in the UK are quite keen that no normality, we get back to a, a more normal situation as soon as possible. Um, they've, you know, they've, there's guidelines now in terms of how um, people can exercise together. And ultimately, I think that will begin to open the door from big events and things like park run to, to potentially start again. But there are so many considerations, you know, volunteers have to be comfortable um, with, with, you know, with, with the environment. So I, I think it's a wait and see. Um, you know, for me, I, I'm, I, I think that, the, and I know it's really tough on major event providers, uh, and that is really difficult. In the same way, it's really tough on world athletics and all of the, all of the, the nations across the world, the, you know, the, the, the Grand Prix Diamond League series is that uh, obviously the Olympic Games not happening in, in Tokyo and the Paralympic Games. So it's a huge period of adjustment to a, a new world and you know, preparation hopefully for next year. But for me, I think that, that certainly in the, 
in the UK and USA and you know the big nations like that have really struggled with coronavirus it's the vaccine that's the critical thing that if the vaccine can be developed and it's safe and it works and it can be given to as many people as need it as, as soon as possible then maybe the vaccine is the key to the opening the door for a more normal world that we live in to be resumed yeah, and certainly there seems to be odd, odd bits of, uh, of, of good news happening around that. So hopefully we're, we're getting closer to that. I always like to speak about leadership as well. And, and obviously this is a time where, you know, some leaders have stood up, other leaders have, haven't done so well. What are some of the leadership principles you run by and what are some of good examples of leadership that you've seen during the course of this, both within the sport and in the community, Dave? Um, well, I was in New Zealand, um, and I don't like picking on, on one person, but I was really impressed with Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister of New Zealand. And, you know, they had things like they, act, they, they acted quickly and went hard. Um, put people like her and great leaders seem to be able to deal with complexity, but in a very, in a very humane way. Great communicators, they have empathy. It's not all about them, it's about others. Um, they, they help people believe. I think she helped people believe in New Zealand. If they, if they went hard and went quickly and had that short period of really being tough, that ultimately things would improve. Uh, and they make the big decisions at the big moments. Um, you know, and that we're all, we can all make decisions when the moment isn't that big. But I think great leaders have the ability to make a big decision uh, at, at the big moment. And that's true in racing. You know, so the greatest runners, distance runners, middle distance runners, you know, they know where to be at the crucial point in a race and they can make that big decision at the big moment in a race. And I think that's true in life. And, and you know, it's been fascinating watch and having um, an opinion on how leaders across the world have handled this most incredibly complex and potentially catastrophic situation. Yeah, I mean, hugely tough, isn't it? I mean, you know, and almost you do it damned if you do and damned if you don't sometimes situation, but you have to be decisive and, and, and at least making a decision. You know, it's like being at the front of the race and deciding you're going to kick with 300 meters to go and, and yeah. it doesn't work. But if it works, you, you've, at least you've made a decision. You haven't kind of hung back and, and, and missed out. You're not going to die wondering. And I guess that's, that, that's part of it, that you, they've got to make a decision and stick by that decision and, and make people feel so comfortable. Yeah, and I think it's making a decision, um, but it's also taking people with you yeah. because you can make a decision in isolation uh, or you can make a decision in a very autocratic way. But you know, make a decision based on consultation, on speaking to the right people. Um, but then having made that decision, take as many people as you can with you. That, they're kind of winning the hearts and minds. And yeah, it's fascinating. And, and you know, over the years, um, you know, it's been wonderful to watch different people's leadership style, but they all have kind of common qualities and it's it's fascinating to watch that yeah absolutely dave you've obviously inspired uh, during your career <clears throat> excuse me so many people uh, all over the world me being one of them i'd love to finish with a, an inspirational story i'm sure you know beside your stories you've seen so much inspiration is there one that stands out for you that you'd like to leave the viewers with please there's too many chris but but one person I've got incredible um, respect for is Paul Sinton Hewitt, the, cre the creator of Park Run. Uh, he created Park Run over 15 years ago um, when he was at a, a tough point in his life. And it began with himself and 11 other people running around Bushy Park on a Saturday morning. And he had no idea what he was going to create. Um, but he's created a movement that, um, that is based around his values as a person and the values that, became, that, that he created all those years ago. And, you know, principles like it, forever it will be free and that it's about community. It's about going for a run with your mates, having a cup of coffee, being together, sharing social movements, caring for each other. And, you know, I think Paul has, has inspired a movement that is quite breathtaking alongside many other people over the years in, in running. Um, you know, Chris Brasher that created the London Marathon and Fred LeBeau in the New York Marathon and various others, Brennan Foster with the Great North Run. But I think, you know, Paul's motives, Paul Sinton Hewitt's motives 15 years ago were so altruistic and he's been true to his word. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great to be a little bit involved in what I think is an amazing movement. Yeah, it's a great story. And you, and you couldn't meet a, a more humble person. We had the pleasure of having him, as you're aware, as, as our opening keynote speaker at our Mass Participation World Conference in Singapore two years ago. And 
and it went down so incredibly well. People, people were just so inspired for it. And as, as I say, you, you don't need to tell you so humble and down to earth with it. It's uh, it's wonderful. The only sort of downside of Paul is that he's significantly faster than me still when, when, when I do do a park run with him. He's either minutes ahead of me or running next to me in a very patronising way, keeping me going as I limp along. <laughs> oh, that's, that's quite not fair, is it? But uh, we'll, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt with that, given that he's done so much amazing work. Dave, so wonderful to catch up with you. Really appreciate you making the time. Um, all the best to you and, and Linda over the coming months and your grandchildren. Hope it's not long before you... You're giving them a big hug and, uh, and uh, having, having some great times with them. Thank you so much for making the time. Pleasure, Chris. Love to speak to you. All the best.